So this is the main greenhouse. This is my tropicals greenhouse, my playground. Uh, it's near impossible for me to get people back here to see what's going on in the big geodesic dome. So I thought maybe I could take some video and explain what's going on. I will point out from the get-go that everything in here is a work in progress because that's basically how my life works. So it is a disaster and everything's in motion and uh, all the projects are in progress, half done. A um, lot of experimentation and it's kind of a mess because we have started to move stuff out for the summer but we haven't actually finished that process or started rebuilding it yet for uh, the main part of summer. Kind of quite a ways behind here. So um, as we come in this big standpipe is what's left over from what used to be the main tank in the middle for aquaponics uh, that fed these aquaponic beds and I'll discuss that more in a minute. Um, over here on the side, we have a great big, huge fig tree. Uh, great big jolly tiger. Uh, this does produce edible figs by the hundreds, actually. Uh, and it's, it's monstrous. Um, it's completely covering up what used to be my utility shelves. So we'll be redoing all of this quite shortly, actually, so that I can get access or put new stuff there. Uh, this entire greenhouse is going to be repurposed for a central aquaponics system later. These are my uh, the current batch of little baby tilapia. Okay, not so baby. They're maybe two and a half inches now. And they're quite hungry. So we'll go ahead and feed them. Takes them a minute to all realize there's food, but they'll continue to eat it over the next couple of minutes. Uh, we do encourage the growth of natural food in there if you can see any of it, um, because they will eat the algae and stuff. So uh, it does actually have a filter media bed up top with a bit of mint in it. it used to have a lot of other stuff where actually taking this apart too. So it's got what triple redundant filtration at the moment to make up for this going away. Uh, the whole system will have to come down soon because it's not going to support these fish if they get much larger. Uh, lots of random stuff. This is redwood. This is a great big variegated monstera. Various African trees, figs, cuttings, aloes. Uh, Hoya, uh, baby Aus uh, no, um, Amaryllis, uh, so lots of little projects. I think there's a Gloriosa in that, just starting to come up there, some little Gloriosa seedlings. Uh, so lots of stuff going on, lots of cuttings here, uh, monkey puzzle, various calicasias, uh, begonia. I've had that cycad now for I don't know how long from seed. It's getting pretty large. We're going to have to do something more interesting with it soon. Uh, this is a, what, a leafless bird of paradise. Yeah. And it gets a little bigger every year. It's never bloomed. I'm not quite sure what I need to do with it, but I haven't invested the time yet. Uh, Lots of the stuff in the middle is my citrus collections and so on. We do have a bit of the Okinawan uh, sweet potato, purple sweet potato there in the middle from last year. So hopefully we'll get some big potatoes on it. It's a long season. You can see all that lemongrass in the middle. Uh, I think this is full of, in the back it's got my mother uh, rosemary on top. And I'm sticking around. That's my ARP mother plant. Some palms and another seedling cycad that's getting pretty big. Uh, some of the few things that survived from my trip from the east side 10 years ago. So a pretty old cycad. Lots of cuttings and reproduction of the jolly tigers around the greenhouse. And orchid cactus and just tons of stuff. I can't even list it all. Um, 
I guess we have this here is an avocado. Well, an avocado with an orange coming up through the, <laughs> the side. Uh, coming around, this big leafy thing is a uh, pomegranate. Uh, more oranges, more variegated monsteras. You can see down in here the. Uh, this is a morphophallus. Uh, it's got really cool stems that come up. Uh, <clears throat> this is a silk floss tree, which I started from seed a couple years ago. It's looking pretty healthy. Um, the first aquaponic bed here has, uh, oh, I think these are shallots. Shallots and the passion vine is trying to creep in. It kind of grows everywhere. Ever since I let it get into the ground, it's kind of a pretty plant though, so I like the blooms and vines everywhere. It's really not too hard to control. I just move it out of the way. Got a bit of a variegated alocasia. Some, uh, what are those? Chives or garlic? Well, I think one of those is chives, one's garlic chives in the back. Uh, these are big stalks of celery. Uh, this is a dwarf Orinoco banana that I put in last fall. It didn't do much through the winter because it was cold, but now it's starting to take off. And the uh, sheep sorrel. Uh, what is this? Uh, yeah, that's garbage. <laughs> uh, and a... Uh, Starfruit, little starfruit seedling. <clears throat> We've got a canna that I grew from seed. I think it's a cross from a couple varieties. It's a dwarf, super dwarf canna that I crossed. Um, this is this is uh, probably the whole reason the aquaponics beds are still up at the moment. This banana is about 18 months old, and you can see all the pups at the bottom. But it has decided that it's going to go ahead and fruit. And that's kind of a rare thing around here, because it takes a long time to do that. It choked a bit, though, so we had to kind of cut it out to get it free. And I don't know if I can get around here and see the uh, actual bloom on the backside. But um, that's the male flower, and the female flowers come up behind it and produce bananas. So I don't know if we'll get fruit off of it, but I'm certainly going to give it the opportunity to if I can. Uh, down there, you see wasabi. That wasabi's been in there for about a year, I think. So it's getting, you know, it's doing all right. That's an experiment. Uh, I'm hoping that the water temperatures in the aquaponics will help mediate the heat that we have and allow us to continue to grow wasabi th through the year, which we normally can't grow outdoors here. That's, I think, an ARP rosemary and a bit of uh, pretty dry lemongrass in the back. It doesn't seem to be thrilled with that location, but it doesn't quite die, so I've left it. Lots of random stuff here. Jasmine. It's a variegated ponytail palm, uh, some old palm trees that I can't seem to get rid of because, you know, palm trees. <laughs> I think that's Galangal. I don't know whether that's the large or the small. I'd have to look. This is a, uh, a hibiscus, which kind of stopped blooming. I think it got too warm there, but it looks like it's got buds, so it's going to bloom again. This is a Hawaiian hibiscus. Made a, this is a, actually a scented hibiscus. Let's see. No, no blooms on it either at the moment. But it uh, has white flowers with red stems, and it's fragrant. And actually, it's kind of cool. More oranges. This is a pineapple lily. That's one of the few that's supposed to be hardy in our area, but I. Thought I'd grow it up a bit before I chanced it outside. More fig cuttings and, uh, I don't know, pinstamon and 
with monsia cuttings and uh, oranges and I don't know what all down here. Got some Aurelia, uh, some uh, Plumeria start, um, a lot of little perennials in here. Not going to try and tease them out. They're all babies at the moment. This would be one of the pineapple guavas. Uh, I think this one's supposed to be self-fertile, but it's never produced fruit. It blooms every year. No fruit. Lots of baby uh, uh, jolly tigers everywhere. It's an unhappy citrus. It was potted in too small a pot, didn't get enough nutrients, but you can see the new leaves are coming out green and pretty, so I think it'll be okay. <clears throat> That's a raft. Used to be uh, in a secondary tank that was above this one. These two rafts, and when we took apart part of the system, then I took down the rafts. There's still a little bit in there. There are in there, and they're not going to come out and show us. But there's a few uh, tilapia still down in that tank, providing nutrients. Some these are larger tilapia. Uh, I don't know, six inches. They're not huge. Oh, yeah. And a floating mimosa there. So, let's see, I guess that's a mandarin orange. It actually produces lots of mandarin oranges for me, which is nice. They're very tasty. And a finger lime behind it. Uh, it's not normal that they're all crowded together like this. They kind of got pulled down off the shelves when we were taking stuff apart. and. They're waiting to go out to where they're supposed to be summering outside of the greenhouse, so everything's just crammed in at the moment. Hopefully not much longer. So, I guess in the back, we uh, the main pond that was in here started leaking, and I took it apart. And a lot of the aquatics then got stuck into these two uh, originally quarantine systems. I guess the one on the side was a quarantine system and the other one was for growing um, uh, edible plants for the tilapia to eat. Uh, water celery and, um, oh, what is that stuff down there? Um, not frog bit. So the camera actually overheated uh, and I had to go cool it down. <laughs> It's about 102 in here according to the thermometer and it's a 92 degree day. One of the reasons we need to clear everything out is so I can get the active cooling going in here. Uh, normally we have a big evacuation fan in here during the summer which does most of what we need for cooling. Uh, the dome itself has a radiant barrier there, two layers of barrier here. You can see the uh, expensive fancy bubble wrap. <laughs> UV stabilized, uh, yeah, bubble wrap. But um, the between the insulation and our ceiling fan, which basically has run nonstop for the last six, seven years, um, we get pretty good circulation insulation in here. Um, but yeah, we do need to actively evacuate the air during the hottest parts of the year. For most of the year, just opening the door uh, provides you know, enough escape because the ceiling fan rotates all the air around. Um, this is the beginning of the new aquaponic system. Uh, it's the uh, sump for what's going to be a big system uh, that's going to be in the center. Well, I think that's about all we're going to be able to do today. Uh, temperature's risen to about 98 outside since I started this video. And, of course, I've had to go in and out a couple times So for the heat. Um, ladder's in there because we're still doing work on the top. But um, I think we'll probably... I'll end with some basic details. This dome is... 20, 22 feet across, geodesic dome. Those struts are all about four feet. Uh, built a cedar. We built it six, seven years ago. I'm losing track. Uh, that's a woven 12 mil poly fabric out there. 
We've got about between the struts and the poly, we've got 80, just over 80% permeability of light. Uh, but we do have a IR barrier, the anti-drip, all that stuff going on. Uh, you can see that on this side we got the bubble wrap and down below, uh, but there's a section here that doesn't have it. So we'll be putting that up as we move these out. Um, I've used lower grade interior plastic for the second layer and that's meant I've had to replace it a few times so that's why it's not covered at the moment. Um, but the two layers really helps give us uh, a solid 20 even 30 degree uh, differential between the interior and exterior without a whole lot of heating during the winter. So there's been a great structure, a lot of room. Um, we'll be putting a circular pond in the middle later uh, assuming that plans don't change and they keep doing be adding, uh, moving most of these plants out, adding new grow beds, and then uh, bringing back in shelving and structures so that we can continue to take advantage of the height with our tropicals and continue to grow some of the more exotic stuff in here. Uh, and I'll point out that this particular room is separate from my propagation greenhouse. Uh, nothing from here ever goes to the propagation greenhouse for the plant nursery or anything like that uh, without going through a quarantine protocol and uh, a thorough washing uh, and inspection to make sure that we're not bringing pathogens into the stuff that we're selling. So um, lots of exciting stuff going on here. Hopefully I'll do some later videos as we move forward and uh, uh, this way uh, instead of all the people who want to see my <laughs> my projects who can't actually get out here, I can uh, maybe share some of it uh, by video. So let me know if you have any questions, comments. Uh, be happy to discuss them, and we'll see you again later.